got type 1 diabetes when I was 27, and I've had it for 27 years. Okay, I'll save you the strain. If you're doing the math, I'm 54. <laughs> but wait a minute. This is the beginning of the group participation. You're supposed to say, no way. <laughs> so I think we should try this again. I'm 54. Wait, this is a big room. I'm 54. No way. Oh, I love you. Hi, I thought the presentation by Maggie was absolutely outstanding and very inspiring. And I know when we first find out about diabetes, we want to ignore it. Okay, maybe we want to ignore it all the time, but particularly in the beginning, we might want to ignore it. Maybe you feel like my mom felt when she got type 2. Oh, another doctor. Another pill, another prescription I need to fill, another season, another reason for making co-pays. And you know, it's so great to learn from each other, and sometimes we think, well, we know everything, but there's always something else to learn, right, in life? And I remember one time, I thought I was Little Miss Smarty Pants. I had everything all figured out. You couldn't tell me anything about diabetes. And then, I brought a plane down. No kidding. All I remember is looking at the row in front of me on the airplane, because I wanted to see what the stewardess was passing out for lunch, to see if it was better than what I brought with me. Okay, so you know this is 20 years ago if I think the food on the airplane is going to be good, right? Now, I had food with me. Did I eat it? No. You were there. You know that. Was it time to eat? Oh, way past time to eat. Had I tested my blood sugar? Yes. And I, I did. That's what's even more pathetic. I tested it, and then I ignored it and didn't do anything about it. And then, the next thing I remember, I'm waking up, I come to and the stewardess is snuggling with my three-month-old two rows back. <laughs> and then I realize we're on the ground, that's not good. And I look at my brother next to me and he is white as a sheet. And then I notice that every single eyeball on that plane is looking at me. And I realize I have got chocolate spread all over my face, my hands, and down the front of me. Some genius had told them that chocolate was the answer to a low blood sugar reaction. I know that Maggie was fantastic. I enjoyed it because I have taken it on as really, um, as a heavy load, as a burden. I was diagnosed in November. And you made me feel, you lived like a weight. You know, because you, you're you carefree about, not carefree where you don't care, but that you, it doesn't have to be so heavy-hearted about it. So I like that, and I know that a lot of people have enjoyed that. You made us laugh, and you, you know, you just lifted our spirits, and that's what we need. And they keep a log. And let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff on here. I think they have the number of arguments they might have had that day to see if that raised their sugar up. <laughs> I'm not sure, but they track all kinds of information. Thank you. That's awesome. That's wonderful. And, you know, that's the kind of information we want to bring to our doctor's office, right? You know, my brother wanted to kill me when he found out that any of the sugared juice or sugared soda on that beverage cart could have brought me out, like, a lot faster. But I hadn't told him how to help me if I needed it. So I left him helpless. So... I learned the hard way. We definitely don't want to ignore the basics of diabetes. Or we don't want to get too busy that we just can't deal with it. Because if we do, we could end up in Oklahoma instead of New York City. I scared my daughter. I frightened myself. I've got ex-boyfriends who could tell such embarrassing stories. But I kept on searching. Cause I knew there had to be a better way There had to be a better way And I know for me That better way Is an insulin pump
Maggie was great. It was inspirational, and I appreciate it because anything we can do to motivate people is great. Right. Maggie is a hard act to follow, oh, yes. <laughs> but I have to say she encourages you every step of the way. So she's been great to work with. Yeah, it's been really great, great, great working yeah. with Maggie. I'm gonna run around the room and bring the mic to you. If you'd like to share some clever solution that you found in living with diabetes, okay, so that we have our beautiful dialogue back and forth. Now, to give you some ideas, maybe you have a wonderful endocrinologist or diabetes educator or nutritionist or you've discovered something about, you know, exercise or whatever it is. So at, the, at, work, at work, everybody does periodic exercise, like you ring a bell and then everybody stands up and does a little That's exercise. Right. What a great idea. This is very good. Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay, wait, here's another idea. This is, I'm going to get a lot of exercise. This is excellent. We just want everyone to know it's not impossible to walk around the block. It's not impossible to dance and let it rock. And you can feel better every day. It's not impossible. You can feel good now. Whoa, 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 whoa. We'd like to thank you for participating and attending this wonderful Diabetes Dialogue event. Thank you.